So I was trying to figure out how this effect right here is actually achieved, right? And it's something that I didn't even know about, although I was working in Roblox Studio for like a few good years. But I basically just want to show my process of understanding this and figuring this out. But if you are not really interested, then you can skip to the timestamp in the video. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get to it. So I previously saw these doors in the new laser tag template. And few people have been requesting me to, well, show this, because at that time even I didn't know how this was made. But I was like looking through this stuff, basically going to the, going to this far, the green force field. Like looking through the properties, I didn't really find anything. And then these two lights, they didn't really mean anything. And then there was this plane right here. So I saw that this was actually done from a plane. So going over the properties again, I saw that there was a texture ID. Because this plane is actually a mesh part. So I was thinking that maybe this is using some kind of a flipbook. And how could I get the texture ID? I could either just copy this and maybe hope to find it on the developer hub, but I decided to actually just export this into Blender. So well, here is the plane and I decided to just go into the material view and didn't really find anything except, well, this texture. And it kind of seemed like the animation that was playing previously, but something wasn't really right. So I just decided to look on the nodes. And I noticed two things. One is that it had this default mesh texture and something that seemed like kind of a baked image connected to the alpha channel. And this right of the bat told me that this is a behavior with the material. And I also noticed that it's black and white. So I just figured that, hey, I'm also going to put a black and white texture onto well, a force with material. And that got me basically right here. So it has this texture ID, which if I drew scroll down, it's basically just a metalness map from one of the materials that I use. But if I were to change it to something that's more, let's say, gray, then paste it in, I would notice that the behavior would kind of change. And like, I basically just kept going through to figure this one out, looking at the different stuff that can happen, where I also realized that the texture has to be desaturated, because if I put this one, for example, it would just behave like this and it would only render the more like gray part sometimes. Same for like this wooden texture. And another example would be, well, this concrete right here. Where well, this wouldn't really fit. So you could imagine that I was basically just sitting here like thinking that this was some kind of an advanced feature, but in reality it was just a default material, which I didn't even know that it behaved like this. But then I also decided to actually read more into this, and I found out this the forum post from 2019. So this was added 5 years ago and, well, I didn't even notice, but anyways, where a Roblox staff is basically just saying that a new force feed material was added. And how it behaves is basically just through the vertex alpha, which I also mentioned in a trick with the viewport frames in my video. But what's really interesting about this is basically this paragraph right here, saying animations for mesh based parts with custom textures, where the R channel from the RGB I'm guessing of the texture is used to calculate visibility of force field parts over the time, where there is a sliding window of currently visible range of values. So you can see that it's basically just going like this into the center and then it's bouncing back. And this is determined from 0 and 1 values, where the 0 is black and 1 is white. So for this effect again, if I just go into Roblox Studio, I notice that this is behaving the same, where it's like going down and then coming back up. And then it's looping for this effect like this. And also really quickly guys, do you know that I publish UGC items? And well, I recently published these horns. You can go check them out, the link is gonna be in the description. But let's get back to the video. So I thought that, hey, well, this is really interesting. You can have a lot of different effects, for example, with like this ball right here, by just using a black and white texture, where you just need to paste in the texture ID of the mesh part and just give it the force field material. And this will allow you to also change its color. And I was also doing some trial and error, for example with the Roblox logo, where I was trying to see how this one would behave with a normal image that barely contained any like darker colors. Since this image of the Roblox logo is like silver, it's only going to appear sometimes. 
whenever this slider basically just goes down to the one value. If I were to just put a full black texture, this one isn't really going to appear because this slider would fully need to go into zero. But again, with more like grayish values, it's basically just going to work like this. And I was also thinking that, hey, maybe I could do this on some kind of a different mesh. So I grabbed a Taurus knot and a teapot, and now it didn't really work out, so I was thinking that maybe, hey, the mesh has to be UV unwrapped. So here I have a different teapot model, and if I do change its color really quickly to maybe something like red, and then just copy the texture from this one, then just paste it in, it's actually going to work. So what you need to know about is that if you have a mesh that's not UV unwrapped, then this effect isn't going to work. If I try to do the same on this teapot, where I just paste in the texture ID, nothing is really going to happen. But this one on the other hand is basically just working fine. And lastly, you could also imagine that I had a stupid idea, where I basically just wanted to check if I could desaturate any image, and actually just make a force field pattern with this. So normally this is already like basically black and white, but if you had a different image, and you could do that in any program like GIMP or Photoshop, you would just go into image adjustments and then desaturate right here. Then I would want to just change the curves, where I wanted this to be a little bit more grey, because I would basically just want to have a variety of these values on the black and white slider. But let's see what happens if I just import Maxwell into Roblox Studio. So here I imported Maxwell into Roblox Studio and I'm just going to duplicate this plane and just paste Maxwell into the texture ID. And, <laughs> oh my god, wait. <laughs> this is actually so funny. But yeah, you can basically just see that we have a Maxwell pattern on the force field material. And you can also change the color of Maxwell to whatever we want. So yeah, that's basically the neat trick that you can do with Roblox's force field material. And I wanted to record an outro, but what the hell is going on here? <laughs> okay, I guess the planes are just walking away, but anyways, but yeah, again, go check out my UGCs, and leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, but I hope everyone had a nice day, and see ya guys!